Good morning and welcome to Church of the Palms. We are so glad you found your way to us today. At Church of the Palms, our mission is to love God and love neighbor. What Jesus said were the two greatest commandments. Our prayer is that these two commands guide us in everything we do, our worship, our life together, and our service in the community near and far. The Sunday morning service you're about to join is our contemporary worship service. Lyrics to the songs will be on your screen, as well as scripture references when the message has begun. If you decide to worship in person, please dress casually. Come as you are. Bring your favorite cup of coffee or enjoy some of ours. If you'd like more information about any announcements mentioned in today's service, feel free to give our office a call or visit us online. Our website is also a great way to learn more about our mission to love God and love neighbor, and all about our small groups, classes, and community outreach efforts, some of which can be attended online. For those looking to financially support Church of the Palms, there are several ways you can support our mission. One of the easiest is online giving, which, if you are watching online, can be found in the video's description. We're so glad you chose to join us this morning. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Nice to see you all here. Um, we are beginning to gear up for our fall programming, so many of you may have received a letter this week that is talking about some of the schedule changing that we're going to do starting September 11th, that we are going to all worship at 9 a.m. right here in the contemporary service while they are worshiping at 9 a.m. in the traditional service, with the hopes that something new will begin at 10 a.m., that we all can be together under the tree for fellowship and then some short-term classes so that, you know, the hope is that we get to gather and grow together. So stay tuned for more details, and um, I just hope that you will pray about this new thing that is happening and how it might help you to grow a little bit stronger in your faith and with one another. Many of you also um, could have received some emails from Pastor Steve asking for gift cards. Don't do it. He's been hacked. And just wanted to remind you all that you will never receive an email or a text from Steve or from any of us on staff asking for gift cards or money. We'll do that in person when we're here on Sunday morning. So delete those things and darn those people that have those really good techn technology gifts. Just use your power for good, but no, they try to get money out of innocent people. Since our kids went back to school last week, the student kickoff is tonight, 5.30 to 7.30, over in the Palm Center. They've got a taco truck and all kinds of fun things, so looking forward to that. And then the church-wide um, kickoff is next two weeks, sorry, it's in two weeks, and it will be after each of the services. We'll go over to the Palm Center. It's a beach-themed party, lots of good food and good information, so we'll all head over together, and you don't want to miss that in two weeks. With the start of school, it means that tutoring is going to start back, and it's right here in this building. From what I understand from Corinne, our new director, is that she's got a good number of tutors for first, second, and third graders. But we're a little afraid to tutor those kids that are older than third grade. She really needs some help. So if you happen to have those gifts, one hour a week, 
maybe two, you could really make a difference. But、um, particularly looking for those a little bit higher level grades. We want to draw your attention to a fun new way to connect with one another: a churchwide bowling league. That's right, bowling friends. We need eight teams of four. If that's in your lane, we、we'll、hope that you will sign up to do that. It should be great fun. And we finally want to introduce you to our newest members who just joined the church.、Um, they all, I think, this first one. So Nate Camp is,、um, I think, coming to the 11 o'clock service. Marty Chardier, she was just in the nine o'clock service, and Gail and Walter Mamick were also in the nine o'clock service. So we're grateful that these new people have come to partner with us in our mission to love God and love neighbor. And know that if you're ever looking for the official church home to get the name tag, reach out to Pastor Mingy. Let's stand up and greet one another this morning.
Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain.
Thank you, that is so nice. I'd like to invite um, Susan Neisler to come forward. And I have to tell you, I absolutely hate goodbyes. Um, and I have to say goodbye to my dear friend who has been serving as our health and wellness director for three years now. And um, you see Susan's positive energy, this beautiful welcoming smile with our greeters every Sunday morning, and then also over in the Palm Center as she has run that ministry just in this beautiful way. She's not going far. She's still a part of our church family, um, but she's got a lot of personal things and with their family business, and she and Chris need some time together that we just couldn't give her enough time. So I uh, know we're um, just delighted that we've gotten to share ministry with her. We have a little certificate of appreciation with a little dinner for you and Chris. And can you help me thanking her? <laughs> Yeah, this what, is my service. This is her service, so we'll see. And her service, and so she'll start coming at 9 a.m. beginning September 11th as well. I'm going to keep saying that several times. Um, so if my mic runners could come forward as they're coming forward, you know we have lots of ways to give at Church of the Palms. And hey, good to see you. And um, in the baskets as you leave and also online in lots of ways. And if you would please introduce yourself. Uh, Just your name in the school you're going to. Uh, I'm Tanner, and I go to Pineview. Thanks, Tanner. Good morning. I'm Brock Hudson, and I'm a junior at Colorado Mooney High School. Thanks, Brock. So how can we be praying for each other on this day? As you're thinking about that, to raise your hand, there are prayer cards in the back if you prefer to write it down. Just for most kids sitting here who are going back to college within the next few days that we get there safely and we have a good semester. Oh, absolutely. Lord, hear our prayer. Thanks, Olivia. I'd like to ask for prayers for an old friend of all, over 40 years, Joe Myers, who had a severe stroke and is being placed in hospice today. Oh. So please pray for comfort for him and for his wife, yeah. as this was a little bit of a shock, and she's really suffering right now. Yeah. Her name is Janice. So Joe and Janice, I'm Thank thinking you. of you today. So we'll be praying for Joe and Janice and for their friends. Lord... Hear our prayer. Oh, you got it, Tanner. Thanks. Many of you youth know my grandson, Will Zaraga, and he graduated from Cardinal Mooney, and I think he joined some of your events, but he's starting Alabama, and his sister, Caroline Zaraga, is a senior at Alabama, so prayers for Caroline and Will Zaraga. Oh, thank you. Lord, hear our prayers. Thank you. My good friend Debbie here, her son Jordan is leaving today, driving all the way to New York, and she's having a hard time with it, so we could pray for her and Jordan to have a safe trip. Appreciate yes, that. thank you for safe travels, and it's hard to say goodbye to them, isn't it? Lord, hear our prayer. We have a longtime dear friend who's going to be having heart surgery. Uh, he'll find out this week if it's going to be through the vein or more invasive. So prayers for Steve. For Steve. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you. I have a praise report. Um, I Thanks, just, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd balance things out. Um, I just returned from an awesome trip to Honduras with my daughter and two of my grandsons, and God paved the way for everything to be beautiful. And I just want to thank you personally, Church of the Palms, uh, for all that you do to support the Eye Clinic and the Good Samaritan Fund. Uh, when you give your dollars each week, uh, some of them are going to Honduras, and I am grateful. Thank oh, you. Thank you for our friends in, on, in Honduras and for these missionaries that have kept them well in our care. We give you thanks, O oh God. Good morning. My name is Kay. I guess I feel that we need to pray for Church of the Palms with the changes coming up. Mm -hmm. My experience through a few decades of church activity is that 
if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and why do we have to do something different? I look forward to it, and I hope that everyone embraces the changes that are coming in order to continue to grow. Oh, thank you for that, right? That if we can make room for God to do a new thing. Um, but thanks, Kay. So, Lord, hear our prayer. Olivia, that's two, but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My oldest brother just moved back to school after a while, so just prayers for him. Yeah, so for Parker, and um, absolutely. And for all those kids that are starting out something brand new, right? Lord, hear our prayer. First, I have a joy. I'm happy to report that Shirley Philippi has graduated from rehab, and she's returning home tomorrow. Oh, for Shirley, we give Many you thanks, thanks, oh God. And then I'd ask for prayers for all who are sick uh, worldwide. Uh, there's so much illness and people suffering, and also praying for people in war-torn countries. Mm -hmm. For those who are sick, for those who are struggling, may they sense God's presence. And Lord, hear our prayer. Yep, come on back there. I just want to pray for all the people who are affected by Parkinson's disease, whether that's the people who have it or the loved ones who are dealing with that too. Yeah, thank you, Steph, um, for that. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, back in that corner. If you ever want a good workout on Sunday morning, let me know, and you too can be a mic runner. <laughs> good morning. Um, I wanted to pray for um, my aunt and her family, um, Pam Deaver, uh, also has Parkinson's and um, also breast cancer. Oh, um, and wow. her daughter, my cousin, who's only 34, has stage four cancer. I don't know what type, um, but unfortunately she's only gonna be able to take one of the two medications that they offer for it. And so she probably only has months to live. Oh my, for, what is her name? Sir? Sandra. Sandra, so for Pam and Sandra, wow, Parkinson's and cancer and more cancer, Lord, hear our prayer. Sam's got something, right Sam? Yeah. Uh, my cousin's second child, who's only an infant, was recently placed into the hospital oh. with RSV and he's so far, he's recovering really fast and greatly. So just continued prayers for him, and thanks for how fast he's been healing. Absolutely. RSV is nasty, and oh my gosh, Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you. All right. If you are comfortable and want to grab the hand of the person next to you, and if not, just keep your hands folded. It's all good. Trust me. All right. Tanner? Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we lift up all these prayers for your loving care. We pray, Lord, that we might sense your presence in all the places where there is hurt, where there is grieving, where there is sadness. We know that you are with us, that we never go alone. But we pray, O oh Lord, not only that we sense your presence and those that we've prayed for, but that you use us. Help us to be kind. Help us to be patient, to give each other the benefit of the doubt. Help us to really reflect who you are in the world. We ask that you be with each one of us. In Christ's name, amen. Well, as I'm moving up this way, I also would like to invite all of you to continue to pray every day for those people who abuse their powers and who are unkind to others. 
whether individual or groups or militaries or government. So good, our good God will touch their hearts and they will become good neighbors. I'd like to start today this sermon with a wonderful announcement that will happen in this very space. We're going to start our Wednesday night lectures by Pastor Steve. It is going to be my favorite, on my very favorite gospel, the gospel according to Mark. It begins on Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. right here in this room on the last Wednesday of this month. And accompanying announcement with that is we are going to resume our Wednesday night dinners at 5.30 we haven't been able to eat together as a community of faith for two years, but there will be dinners again on Wednesday nights beginning the last Wednesday of this month at 5.30 right here. So our first reading for today is Psalm 80, verses 1 to 3 and 17 to 19. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, let your, light, let your face shine that we may be saved. Our second reading is different verses from Hebrews chapter 11 and 12. Hebrews 11 and 12. Now faith is assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the world were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events at, as yet unseen, respected the warning and built an ark to save his household. By faith, Abraham stayed for a time in the land he had been promised as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob were heirs with him of the same promise. By faith, he received a power of pre-procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered faithful who promised. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth, because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouth of the lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign enemies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sewn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. 
They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Psalm 80 is a psalm of confidence in God's gracious love and power. It speaks of God's care for us, God's power and rule, God's actions to save us, God's shining and saving glory, and God's giving us life. It is an ex expression of a people living by faith in the sure saving action of God. Our reading from Hebrews that you just heard today is a part of a poetic letter that encourages all of us to live by faith. Our living by faith is not an accomplishment of our own. The Apostle Paul makes this clear in his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, saying, by, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. The letter to the Hebrews encourages us to live by faith by giving us a list of people who did. The list includes people from the beginning of Jewish history to the time at which the letter to the Hebrews was written, which was the second half of the first century. The people who lived by faith were empowered to do great works. Before we look at the list of people who lived by faith from Hebrews, I would like to share the story of a person who lived by faith in our own time, one of my heroes. Her name was Ida Scudder. She was a third generation med medical missionary doctor who served her entire professional life in India. In 1890, a 20 years old um, American named Ida Sophia Scudder traveled to India to be with her ailing mother. How many of you are 20 years old here? See, we have some of you. How many of you are a little older than 20? <laughs> oh, come on, be honest. That's great. So Ida traveled because her mother was not well and her father was a missionary doctor in South India. Three men, a Muslim and two Hindus, arrived at her family's home seeking for emergency medical help for their very pregnant wives. The three young Indian husbands refused the assistance of Ida's father, the doctor, because of prevailing caste system and gender customs of India at the time. Without any medical training, Ida was powerless to help. The next day, she learned that all three women had died. After reflection and prayer, Ida felt that God was calling her to serve the women of India. She returned to the United States to become a doctor, graduating in the first class that accepted women at Cornell Medical College in 1899. She returned to the I mean, Dr. Scudder returned to India in 1900 to begin her work as a missionary doctor. With a small gift of $10,000 from a man who wanted to memor memorialize his deceased wife, 
she immediately opened a one-bed clinic giving medical assistance to local women who had no other place to go for health care. By 1902, the 40-bed Mary Tabor Shell Memorial Hospital was opened, beginning the realization of Ida's vision, which is that women should have the same access to quality and compassionate health care that men did, regardless of religion or ability to pay for it. Dr. Ida Scudder dedicated her life to this work and idea, and her legacy continues to inspire people to join her cause even now. That tiny clinic with one bed has grown into the Christian Medical College in Velour, South India, one of India's most prestigious and privileged hospitals and medical schools. It is very commonly nowadays known as Velour Christian Hospital and Medical College. Today, Velour Christian Hospital cares for 9,000 plus patients a day, 2 million patients a year, trains 1,000 doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals each year. The author of Hebrews begins his poetic stories about the people who lived by faith with the definition of faith, which reads, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not seen. Professor John Shelley of Furman University writes that faith includes the awareness that the meaning of life is not to be found in the accumulation of wealth, power, or privilege, but in loving God and neighbor. To me personally, the word faith is better defined by stories like Dr. Ida Scudder, or those mentioned in the letter to the Hebrews. Could you show us what the hospital looks like now? So from one bed hospital, that is what it looks like now. I have visited that hospital several times. It has many chaplains, Christian chaplains, and treats people regardless of their religion or background or poverty or wealth. The author of Hebrews was writing to people who were well versed in the Hebrew scriptures and the, uh, the heroes of Jewish history. He could mention the names of faithful people with little or no explanation that people would know those names and know the stories of faith associated with each name. The buildup of the name of name after name of people who lived by faith became a message in itself. These stories encouraged the Hebrews way back then and encourage us today to live by faith, regardless of what situation we are in. Let us hear again Hebrews' list of those who lived by faith in their names. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, the people of Israel, and Rahab. The author of Hebrews ends that list acknowledging that there are others who live by faith, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Presbyterian pastor David Gray writes, what has helped God's people deal with discouragement since the beginning is the knowledge that we are not alone. We follow in the footsteps of people from the earliest biblical times who were unsure of what the future held for them. We follow in the footsteps of saints who along the way choose to trust God anyway. We follow a God who does not abandon us in times of trouble. We, when we follow the path of staying focused on Jesus Christ, our Savior, 
we are able to see the joy in life despite, despite the suffering. Speaking of suffering, we know there is so much suffering in the world today. War, hunger, homelessness, domestic abuse, oppression, depression, and sickness. The list goes on. Regardless of our suffering, we are encouraged to live by faith in the love and grace of God. It is important to notice that the list of those who live by faith in Hebrew Hebrews includes both men and women, Jews and Gentiles, the powerful and the weak, the rich and the poor, and the ritually clean and those considered unclean. The author of Hebrews' list includes the words, and what more shall I say, for the time for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. These words invite us to think of the people we have seen live by faith, and who could be on the list of Hebrews, or rather the continuation of the list, the list of people who live by faith for us. You have seen people who live by faith. You have been people who live by faith, and I have seen people who live by faith, and I have lived by faith as well. Finally, the author of the letter to Hebrews lists Jesus as a model of faith. It is in Jesus those who live by faith receive their reward. Verses 39 and 40 reads, Yet all these, though they were commanded for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they could not, apart from us, be made perfect. Professor Marianne Sword of New Testament Professor writes that in faith Jesus looked beyond the sufferings of the present to the reality of future joy. In doing so, Jesus was the pioneer of our faith. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 reads, it is no longer I who live, but it is in Christ who lives. It is Christ who lives in me. In the life I know live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Remembering that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we can live by faith today in the confidence of God's gracious and saving care. We know that we are welcomed by faith at the throne of God as Jesus was. As we read in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge God, and God will make straight your path. Today, by faith. We continue to love God and love neighbor. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for all those list of people who have lived by faith that are mentioned and those we know in our hearts that they have and they are living by faith in your love and grace. Help us and teach us to know how to follow them and live our lives every day by faith in you, your love, and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand. <laughs>
Now go in peace, remembering that you are never alone. God is always with you. And live your everyday life, every moment of each day, by faith in God's love and care. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you, now and always. Amen.